in the Quran, uh, in, during the war, female captives have been taken as sex slaves. And he said, I challenge any Muslim here to show me a verse in the Bible why female captives have been taken as sex slaves. Now I've got two verses for you to debunk that myth. Excuse no, me. before that, we do that. I'm it's a strategy. What they do? Please, they yeah. approach. Let's focus. Muslims don't know them. Don't know. Okay. Things. We go to. We come to that. Are there Muslims? So in the Bible, I'm going to talk. Go. I don't know. I got two verses, so that people can know these the verses are in the Bible. The He's running away from it. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned as in the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy. How many? How many of you here are Muslims? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20, verses number 10 to 14 says that. He said, when you are about to attack a town, when you are about to attack a town, first give each people terms for peace. If they accept your terms for peace and open the gates to you, all the people inside will serve you in forced labor. But if they refuse to make peace and, and are prepared to fight, you must attack the town. When the Lord your God hands it over to you, kill every male in the town, but you must keep over for yourself. But you must keep for yourselves all the women, children, all the women, girls, livestock, and plunder. You may enjoy the spoils of your enemies that the Lord your God has, give, has given you. So he doesn't know that the female captives in the Quran, in the war, during the war, in the Bible, have been taken. And the captives can do anything they like with them. Furthermore, one, one verse, he's running away from these verses. It's mentioned again in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 21. Verse number 10 to 11 says that that when you go to war against your enemies and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands and you take captives, if you find among the captives a beautiful woman and you are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. So I really is running away from these two verses because as I said, he challenged Muhammad, he challenged the Muslims. He had a debate with Muhammad's hijab. He picked the topic about Islamic slavery and Alhamdulillah. Brother Muhammad Hijab exposed him in that video. But Arul then challenged the Muslims, saying that I want a Muslim to show me any verse in the Bible where female captives have been taken as sex slaves. So I've got these two verses to you in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20, verses number 10 to 14, and in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verses number, uh, uh, verses number 10 to 11. So these are the two verses, you know, um, I want to call to him for him to know that these verses are in the Bible, in the Quran, not a single verse in the Quran, which speaks about female captives of war to be taken as sex slaves. So they come here, they lie. Their agenda is to come here to attack Islam because they know that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the, in the world. You know, the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. Islam is a simple religion, it means worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and not associating any partners with him. And all the prophets in the Bible, including Jesus, were Muslims. They also submitted their will to Almighty God, Allah. So that's why in the Quran, because when, you, when I come here, it's about Tawheed. My debates, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time is about Tawheed, oneness of God. And they know that if they debate with me, proper debate will be exposed. In fact, I've had a debate with Many of them here, and Alhamdulillah, I have exposed them. We the dais, all the dais here, whenever, whenever we debate with them, we expose them. Because we read the Bible. We, read, we know our Quran and we read the Bible. We know that Jesus was a Muslim. All the prophets were Muslim. They all came with one single message, which is Tawheed, which is worshiping Allah SWT and do not associate any partners with him. So we are inviting you to the religion of all the prophets, which is Islam. Yeah, the concept of God in Islam, I keep on quoting all the time for uh, the Christians to know that the concept of God in Islam, this is what all the prophets would ascribe to, including Jesus. If you read the uh, God's Quran, it is mentioned in Surah Al Ikhlas. The Quran has 112, 114 surahs. 114 surahs. From the first surah, first chapter, they call it chapters, first chapter. Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter Al-Fatiha, to the last surah, Surah Al-Nas, chapter Al-Nas. And the concept of God in Islam, he got to the 112 surah. Oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He said, Kul hu Allah hu ahad. Say he's Allah the one, Allah hu samad, Allah upon whom all defend. La mi alid wa la mi ilad. He because not, no, he's begotten, wa la mi akul lahu, bufan ahad. And there is not an altar like him. 
If they say, I keep on saying, Jesus never said he's God, never said worship me. Jesus was subservient to Almighty God Allah. In your Bible, he was subjected to God. When Jesus said, worship the Lord your God and serve only him, but you're worshiping Jesus. Jesus said, the true worshipers in your Bible worship Almighty God. The Father, you call the Father. In the Bible, in Gospel of John, chapter number four, verse number 23. So there is not a single verse in the Bible. The whole Bible, where Almighty God said he's a trying God. The Christians of today, the preachers that come here, have will study their Bible. They will quote John, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 14 said, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. They will quote John uh, 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. They call John 14, 9. He that has seen me has seen the Father. John 10, 30, and my Father are one. All John, 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 uh, uh, John 8, 58. Before Abraham was, before Abraham was, I am. As I 9, 6. These are the verses they cause all the time to prove this alleged divinity of Jesus Christ. Peace for him and the concept of trinity but these are obscure verses the bible is a pretty verses why almighty god in the old testament says only one god him alone is how to worship why can they reflect on that because if you break the first commandment Deuteronomy 6 4 here all is right the lord our god the lord is one and jesus said the same thing in the gospel of mark chapter number 12 verse number 29 here all is right, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one Lord, not two in one, not three in one, not one and a half, but one God. My brothers and sisters, we are inviting you to the religion of all the prophets, which is Islam. Islam, as I say, simply means submitting one will to all my God, Allah. Now the Christians are now the preachers here and the pastors that I normally have a dialogue with. Now they will tell you, we the Muslims, are telling the Christians to show you a verse from the Bible why Jesus said he is God, why he said worship me. I want you now to show me Tawheed in the Bible. Now they're telling you Muslims to show them Tawheed in the Bible. How oh, Tawheed means oneness of God. The question you should ask me is to show you a verse in the Quran where Allah said he is Allah. You understand? If you read uh, Guru's Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, several verses in the Bible, se sorry, several verses in the Quran, Allah makes it plain. In fact, the Quran is replete with this oneness of God. But in the Bible, Jesus never said his God, never said worship me. If you read God the Quran, it is mentioned in, in uh, Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 18, says that Allah weaknesses. Allah witnesses that there is no deity except him. Allah witnesses that there is no deity except him. And so do the angels and those of knowledge. That he is maintaining the creation in justice. There is no deity except him. The exalted in might, in might the wise. Allah is saying he is only one God. For the most important Quran, Allah says in Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse number 14. Allah said, Indeed, I am Allah. There is no deity, there is no God except me. So worship me and establish prayers for my remembrance. This, this is the type of verses we want you to quote in the Bible. Why Jesus himself said he's God, or oh, worship me. Or oh, why that you're trying God. The Father, the Word in Holy Ghost, says he's God, or oh, worship me. Or oh, he's the creator. You will never find a single verse in the Bible. Why Jesus said he's God, why he said worship me, and he's not the creator. They said the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, why involve the creation? What a lie. If you read the Bible, in the Old Testament, God said he created everything. I quoted extensively this verse here. It is mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, Isaiah 44, 24. God said, I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread the earth by myself. Not a single verse in the Bible, why Jesus said he created everything. But instead, Jesus said, the Father, which you call God, is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. You read it, you read this in Gospel of Matthew, 
chapter number 11, verse number 25. Matthew 11, 25. Here, Jesus said, I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father, Lord of the heavens and the earth. So who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth? Almighty God. So my brothers and sisters, as I said, Almighty God is one Lord. It's not a triune God. One verse that the Christians will never quote or ponder on is the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5. Here God is emphatic. He says, you shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Emphatic, Almighty God said, He's not a man. Because they're 11, 9. For I am God and not man. But you just said Jesus was fully God and fully man. But there is not a single verse in the Bible where any, any verse which says that Jesus was fully God, fully man. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to end this video as usual with a quotation from the Goddess Quran in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Before I go into that, I'm going to quote verse number Goddess Quran, why Jesus is saying, you worship Almighty God, Allah. If you, if you read the Quran, remember, in Islam, Isa alayhi salam, which he called Jesus, peace upon him, was only the Messiah sent to the children of Israel. It was a Messiah, a prophet. As I said, he never said it's God, he never said he worship me. So if you read the God's Quran, it is mentioned in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 50 to 51. 50, this is Jesus speaking here in this verse. He said, um, He said, I have come to you, verse number 50 said, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me, verse number 51. Indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship Him alone. This is the straight path. A similar message repeated in Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse number 36. It says here, same message Jesus said, Indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship Him alone. This is the straight path. If you read the Bible, go to the Bible, the same thing. Bible in the Bible, in John 4 23, Jesus said that the true worshippers will worship the Father. You read that, it's mentioned. Jesus said, as I said, in John 4 23, it says, But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. So, according to Jesus, the true worshippers was the Almighty God. The first worshippers worship Jesus and the creation. So, as I said, we the Muslims worship the Creator Allah and we do not associate any partners with him. And one word for that in Arabic is Islam. So I'm going to end this video, as I said, with a quotation from the Gulos Quran, from Surah Al-Imran 364. Kul ya al kitab say all people the book, that come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first time, Allah namuda illa Allah, that we worship none but Allah. Wala yusuka bi shay'aw. That we associate no bad partners with him. That we erect not from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. For it our love. But if they turn away to Kulu Sadu, then bear witness they are now Muslim, that we are Muslim, bound to Allah's will.